Hello children, welcome back. Today we will discuss the second part of the chapter, Fiber to Fabric. Let's get started. In the previous section, we have already seen this flow chart. Let us discuss it all over again. We have discussed that the fibers, these are of three types mainly, dietary fibers, natural fibers and synthetic fibers. We have also learned that the dietary fibers, they have no use in fabric formation and the natural fibers are the ones which are obtained from plants and animals. And from plants, the fibers that we obtain are cotton and jute, which we have discussed. So today we will discuss the fibers which we obtain from animals, okay, which is in the form of wool and silk and some synthetic fibers. Now first animal fibers. Animal fibers, these can be obtained from the hair of animals, like wool is obtained from the fleece of sheep and uh, fleece of goat is also used to make wool, which is called pashmina. And silk, it is made from the cocoon of silk. Wool, it is obtained from the hair on the body of sheep or goat and the process in which the hairs are removed from the body of these animals, that is called shearing. The wool, then the wool which is produced, it is processed in order to make yarn and that yarn is either weaved or knitted in order to make woolen clothes of different kinds like it can be coats, sweaters, mufflers, etc. Woolen fibers are fluffy. Why? Because they have or they retain a lot of air between them and because of this reason only, they also trap the body heat and they keep us warm. So they are good to wear in winters. And Australia is the biggest producer of wool in the world. This is the process here. Sheep is there and the hairs are removed from the body of sheep. This is in the form of raw product. And that raw product is used for making woolen yarn. And that woolen yarn is further used for making different, different kinds of woolen clothes. Next is silk. Silk or in Hindi we call it resham. It is a fiber which is widely used in India and other Asian countries. Now how it is obtained? It is obtained from a insect which is called silkworm and from the what happens in that and it is a natural protein fiber. Okay, So that silkworm it, uh, it creates a protective covering around itself in the, form, in the form of cocoon and from that cocoon itself silk is obtained. Now the process in which the silkworms are raised is known as sericulture. The silkworms they feed on mulberry leaves. So that is why the process of growing silkworms on mulberry trees and obtaining silk from them. It is called sericulture. Seri for silkworm and culture means growing. China, Japan, Thailand these are the main producers of silk in the world. In this diagram we can see there are the silkworm you can see it is feeding on the mulberry leaves. And uh, these are the white ball like structures which are called cocoon. Now from these cocoon itself the silk is obtained and which is further used for making different different kinds of clothes. Now the process in which the fabric is obtained from a fiber is as follows. First of all we have a fiber. Now we know the fiber can be of various types. The fiber it can be obtained from plant like cotton or jute or from animal like silk or wool. Whatever fiber we are having, that fiber is used to make yarn. Yarn, what is yarn? Dhaga. Okay. From that yarn, fabric is made. Now, how it is done? Let us see. So, first, uh, let us understand how fiber can be used to make yarn. In simple, we can do it on our own as well. Okay. What you have to do in that, take some cotton wool and pull apart a portion of it. You can try it at your home. Just take a small uh, uh, piece or some cotton wool take it in your hand and then now hold it in one hand with other hand what you have to do you have to draw out a little wool and then start twisting it between your forefinger and thumb and go on pulling and twisting yarn the process of twisting the fibers to make yarn is called spinning and spinning it can be done using the simple could be there or it can be used for making uh, through a spindle charkha. On a large scale the spinning is done by modern spinning machines which produce stronger yarn of uniform thickness. Now we have yarn by our side. 
Now what we have to do? We have to make clothes out of it. So yarn to fabric. It is done by two methods. Like at first we were having fiber of different kinds. Then that fiber is converted into yarn. And the process is called spinning. Twisting the fibers in order to make yarn is called spinning. And now we have a yarn. Now how to convert that yarn into fabric? There are two methods for the same. Like one is weaving, another is knitting. Now let us discuss what are these two different methods. Weaving, in what in weaving, what we do, we have to we have two sets of yarn. They are woven to make a fabric. And then uh, weaving is done on devices which are called looms. Now these looms can be operated manually or on a smaller scale which are called hand looms. And the fabric made on these hand looms, it is not very long. Okay, on a large scale, the fabric is made on power looms in mills and the fabric produced, it is comparatively several meters longer. Another method is knitting. So in weaving, we need two sets of yarn by our side, but in knitting, only one yarn is capable of making a complete fabric. Like you must have seen your mother uh, knitting a sweater for you. So you can see there is a only one set of yarn is there or sometimes two, but mostly only one set of yarn is there that is used to make a piece of fabric. So that is a from here only we can understand the difference between weaving and there is one another category that is synthetic fiber or man-made fibers or fabrics. Now what are these? These are not obtained from the natural sources. These are made in factories with the help of some chemicals. That is why they are called synthetic, something which is produced. These are produced on a large scale. They are much cheaper and then the natural fabrics and the examples are nylon, rayon, terylene, etc. Comparatively, they are uh, strong and they have uniform thickness and very very smooth. Blended fabrics. Now what is the meaning of blend? Let us first understand the meaning of blend. Blend is something which is uh, something uh, which is a mixture of two or more things. right? So here the blended fabrics will be the one which will be a blend of both synthetic fibers as well as natural fibers like terricot. What is terricot? Terricot. Terry for terylene, cot for cotton. So it is a cloth or a fabric which is made by mixing both terylene as well as cotton. Now why this blending is being done? Because in order to bring the good qualities of both the types of fibers. Adding synthetic fibers to natural fibers, it increases the strength of the fabric. It makes it more durable and easy to maintain because synthetic fiber is strongest. Okay, then it is followed by mixed fiber and the natural fiber it is uh, in the com terms of strength, it, is, it comes lower than the synthetic fiber. Now let us, let us have some quick look at the history of clothing material. Very early men, they used to live in caves, right? The ancient men used to live in caves. So in order to protect himself from cold, what he did, he, st he started tying grass or leaves around himself. So that is the, those were the first clothes. Right. After that, around 40,000 years ago from now, men invented needle which was made from bones or we can also, they were also called bone needle. The skins of animals were sewn together with needles using plant fibers. The largest skins were wrapped around the body and they, what they were do, they were just joined at the shoulder part only. After that, men learned to weave the twigs and long grasses to make coats, clothes, mats, mattresses, baskets, etc. Then slowly, slowly men learned to gather wool from sheep and turn it into cloth. The skill of weaving was greatly improved in the older civilizations in China, Egypt, India, etc. Silk, it was firstly made in China in 3000 BC. Indians were first people to make cotton cloth. Till 13th or 14th century, people mostly were, wore unstitched clothes like sari, dhoti, lungi, shawl, mufflers. So what are these? These are all unstitched items of clothing. These are even used today. These are just draped. Why we call them unstitched? Because these are just draped around the body. And with the development of machines, stitched clothes came into existence. They become more and more popular and easy to wear. Nowadays, we wear different, different kinds of clothes of different colors and so on. Now, here's a simple assignment for you. What you have to do is you have to make any decorative item with the help of crochet or crochet 
In this, you can take the help of your family members, friends who know the art. So, that's all for today. Thank you so much.